A very good evening to you and many thanks for joining us tonight on The Big Story. My name is Sharon Momani. Now tonight, President Uhuru Kenyatta has delivered his first State of the Nation address since he took out of office for his second term. The State of the Nation address delivered in a joint sitting of the Senate and the National Assembly had a surprise apology from the head of state. Mr. Kenyatta apologized to the nation for anything he said during the campaign period that was hurting or damaging and called on other politicians to follow suit. He further articulated more on the Building Bridges initiative, saying that although the handshake was between him and the opposition leader, Raila Odinga, it was for the good of everyone. The president's speech also exuded a reconciliatory tone when referring to state organs especially the judiciary that he once referred to as an institution of bandits. This and other snippets of the president's speech are in the big story tonight. We start off with his call for unity, which he insisted is not a sign of unanimity. We hope to emphasize that collaboration comprises both competition and disagreement. We did not immediately solve all Kenya's most pressing problems, nor did we see eye to eye on every proposed answer. It is important to emphasize that unity does not necessarily mean unanimity. The Right Honorable Raila Odinga and I stood together, not because we agreed on every item of politics or policy, but because we agreed that Kenya is greater and belongs to all of us. Right, and to help analyze uh, that speech by the president, I have a super panel of do lawyers here in studio with me. I have Dr. Lutalala Muhwana and Steve Ogola, as well as Kiputo Arab Kirwa, who is the deputy party leader of Amani Coalition. Many thanks for joining me this evening, gentlemen, and we shall be getting into unpacking that all-important address that we had from the president this afternoon. But today afternoon, our lead reporter, Sophia Wanuna, uh, was at Parliament's buildings where she sought the views of various legislators on the president's State of the Nation address. Here now is Sophia speaking to Makwene Senator Mutula Kilonzo Jr., a National Assembly Public Accounts Committee Chairman of Pio Wandai. And I have with me the whip uh, minority in the Senate, uh, Mutula Jr. Thank you so much, Senator, for joining us. What did you make of that speech? Uh, um, I'm both happy and disappointed at the same time. Happy that the president uh, took the ultimate political responsibility as the president and accepted that we as leaders were responsible for the chaos that happened in the elections, last general elections, and apologized on his own behalf. And I urge all leaders from wherever you are to apologize to Kenyans for destruction of property and the loss of life. To that extent, then, I, I'm happy that he, he realized and, and, and happy that I, I now know that the judiciary will not be revisited. But on the question of um, corruption, the problem about the fight against corruption is the investigative arm. They are the ones who are doing bad investigations. They are the ones who are making sure that files, when they go to the DPP, are returned. Uh, NYS cases are case in mind. So whereas we have recovered money, the, we have not shown to Kenyans and the world that there is a person in Kenya who is guilty of corruption. So therefore, I would have expected the new DPP to be given certain directives about investigation. The third one is a handshake. The handshake was a good gesture. It has brought the climate, political temperatures down. Uh, we are enjoying some relative good relationship across the political divide. But a way forward would have been very good. Yeah. Timelines. Yeah. Please comment for me briefly about the future of opposition, because now that there's a handshake, largely the two sides uh, seem to be reading from the same script. Does that worry you that that space has not been greatly undermined to actually hold the government to account? Not at all. Uh, by the way, the president uh, gave a cue to the opposition and minority. He said the meeting between him and Raila Omolo Odinga 
they agreed on some other issues and disagreed on others. What does that mean? It doesn't mean that simply because uh, Raila Amon Odinga and the president shook hands, we must agree. We, uh, what he is simply saying, that we don't have to disagree for the sake of it. The things that are mutual to Kenyans' interests, we must agree. The things that are not mutual to Kenyans' interests, corruption, tribalism, we must say and call it as it is when it happens. Yeah. You've talked about not there being a judicial um, visit, but the president was clear about frivolous orders being given, that that should not continue to happen. But he did not in the same breath castigate those in uh, the executive that have been disobeying orders. As far as I'm concerned, there's nothing called a frivolous order. An order is an order. It can only be frivolous if it has been set aside. Uh, and therefore, the, 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 the point is that the president was saying that people should not abuse court orders. Similarly, the statement should have been punctuated with another one. But everybody in Kenya should obey court orders. Alright. Yes. All that right. is the way to do it. That is the way to do it. Many thanks, Mutula Jr. for that. Uh, also, very quickly, let me speak uh, to Mahesh Mio. Thank you so much for making time for us. You will be remembered by most Kenyans during the State of the Nation address of being very combative, coming out uh, to express opposition to many of the government positions. But now you have all appeared to be in one boat. People are concerned about the role and the position of opposition. There is really no need for concern. Because as things stand, we still belong to the minority side of the, of the political formation. And we still play our oversight role as effectively as it can get. What is important is that the handshake has changed the political landscape. And all of us are embracing a, a partnership with all players so that we can move the country forward. Yeah. Yeah. But where will you see the vigorous holding to account that we saw before? The vigor is still there. And very soon we'll be seeing and start looking at the accounts of these ministries in my community of PAC. Yeah, nothing has changed. The government must be held to account, and we have must move forward as a country on the basis of zero tolerance to corruption. All right. Yes. Did that speech meet your expectation? Largely, it did, because they really talked about the matters of national reconciliation and, and cohesion. Um, and again, the issue of fight against corruption was largely dwelt on, which was good. The only thing I had an issue with was the matter of the. Uh, security agencies, when the president attempted to justify their use of excessive force against uh, peaceful demonstrators. Mm. Yeah. All right. Many thanks. Thank you so much for the time, Mr. Um, Shimura. And with that, we hand it back to you. Right. Many thanks there. Our lead reporter, Sophia Wanuna, earlier in the day, right after that address by the president, just getting some reactions from legislators there. And we want to get to unpacking more of the areas that the president covered in his address. And I have a super panel with me in studio. I have lawyers, Dr. Atu, uh, Alitulala Mukwana and Steve Ogola, as well as Kipruto Arab Kira, who is the deputy party leader of Amani Coalition. And many thanks, gentlemen, for joining me uh, this evening. And before we start unpacking the various areas, let's first get a general reaction from each of you very briefly of what really stood out for you uh, in the president's address this evening. Is there anything that really you expected that he hit the nail on the head or did he say something that was unexpected? I'll start with you, Dr. Alitulala. Thank you very much, uh, Sharon, for the invite tonight and thanks for giving the opportunity to discuss this topic about the state of the nation address by His Excellency the President Uhuru Muigai Kenyatta. It is a privilege for me because I have an occasion to dissect and share my thoughts with the Kenyans viewing tonight. And first and foremost, I must begin by giving accolades to His Excellency the President, purely on the account that he began by tendering an apology to the people of Kenya, specifically those who felt offended, hurt, or injured, agreed in any way during the electionary year. To me, that is statesmanship. That is humility from a head of state. It is important that we appreciate that despite the handshake, Kenya bled. Kenya still bleeds. There may be a handshake, yes, but the reasons why we bled, the reasons why the handshake is necessary in the first place, remain unresolved. And therefore, it's a fantastic starting point for a head of state to say, people of this country, I'm sorry. 
if I said anything that hurt you, I'm sorry. And by extension, he's saying, if I did, and of course, many things were did in his name, mm -hmm. which hurt Kenyans, lives were lost. So to start with Sharon, I must congratulate the president for biting the bullet and saying, I am sorry. Right, but, so thank you. statemanship and humility is what stood for Dr. Alitulala and Steve Ogola. What really stood out for you from the address this afternoon? Well, well thank you, Sharon. I think um, it seems that we are having an introduction of a culture of decency because that has been missing. Uh, you see, the Constitution presupposes that it will be implemented by good and decent people who care, that, uh, who care for the rule of law and care that ordinary Kenyans must feel that they comply with the law. So when you see the president coming out and apologizing, uh, I look at it through the lenses of decency, uh, because in the run up to the election, the culture of indecency, bad manners, lack of responsibility, or a sense of shame is what brought us uh, to where we are, uh, almost the, to the brink of precipice. So I think the, the politicians may take you, they should take you from the president, and I hope that this handshake is not a cosmetic gesture. I hope it's not borrowed decency, because if it's borrowed decency, it will collapse sooner than later. But if it's an honest move to reconcile the country, we must begin with minimum compliance with the law, respect for human rights, compliance with court orders. Those are the strongest signals that this country is truly keen on moving on. Otherwise, if you speak, you know, we speak today and tomorrow we reverse what you have committed today, then this country may be stranded at the margins of time, desiring to move forward, but not really moving forward. But yes, it's a good gesture. I hope that we internalize it. The philosophy behind the gesture, not just what is being communicated to us publicly. And uh, Mr. Kira, as part of uh, the opposition, what did you make of this uh, address this afternoon? Thank you, Sharon for the opportunity to share with Kenyans some of my thoughts and my fears and my aspirations. First of all, as I listened through the president's speech, I was moved and I realized that we are almost back to Kenya that we used to have, where there is common decency, there is also a sense of direction, and also respect among colleagues despite very competitive field of politics. Something that is also important is that we, many of us have known the president as a man of decency. And therefore, anything that happened last year, we were getting worried that uh, we are losing the, the Huru Kenyatta that we knew, and we are getting another person that is different from the president that we have always known. Therefore, this afternoon was also like rendezvous with reality, rendezvous with the, the course of, of events that should take place in Kenya now and, and in future. But of course we have the caution because we have been reading body language of individuals on both sides of the divide since the handshake who seemed very hell-bent on derailing the process of dialogue, process of national reconciliation, and process of integration of this nation. Right. And uh, Dr. Alutalala, I I guess it's not really a common thing to see a leader of the opposition shaking hands with a sitting head of state. And whilst this gesture of unity and bringing Kenyans together is one that many would sigh and say is really what uh, you know, Kenyans wanted, the nation wanted, what then is left of the role of the opposition? Because they have a role in governance, oversight and whatnot, giving the, keeping the government, uh, you know, sitting government in check. Uh, are there any kind of dangers that we can expect out of this? Thanks, Sharon. Uh, in my first uh, introductory remarks, I congratulated the president. And uh, allow me to carry on from there before I venture into your answering your question by saying that having tendered his apology to the people of Kenya, the president now needs to walk the talk and engage in what we would call restitution of sorts. Because as I've said, we are here because we took a wrong path as a people of this country and particularly as the politicians of this country. Therefore, it is important that the apology does not just remain cosmetic. What my learned colleague, uh, 
uh, Steve Ogola says that the philosophy of the handshake ought to operate. So I expect that the president will now walk the talk and make this particular state of the nation address have a departure from the past. We know that many times these speeches are for the moment and thereafter they count for nothing. Now let me go to your question as to whether there is to be the opposition, if I rephrase your question correctly. First of all, Sharon, uh, it is not rare in this country that uh, handshakes have, have happened. It happened in the 60s between Jaramogi Odinga with, uh, with Kenyatta. It happened between Honorable Raila Odinga with uh, Baba Moy. It happened again between Odinga and Mzeki uh, Therefore, it is not new. But having said that, the magnanimity with which Honorable Raila and Honorable Huru Kenyatta shook hands must be praised for one singular purpose, that by the very act of that handshaking, the tension that was prevailing in the country was deflated. But that is not the end in itself. The tension was deflated. We do not have Hakietu anymore on the streets, but that is not the end. It is below. People are asking, those who believed in Raila are asking, is Kanan, was Kanan destined on the steps of Arambe Avenue? He has assured the people that, look, my brother Huru and myself have agreed on putting Kenya first. So we are wait to see what it is that they have, they have agreed. However, therein lies the risk, Sharon, that if indeed Honorable Raila Dinga was the epitome of the opposition, and I'm using the word if indeed, he was the ep epitome of the opposition. And he has then walked the opposition into working with Jubilee. The question is, therefore, is there a functional opposition? Mm -hmm. And this is precisely why those who are already talking about removing the presidential system of government mm -hmm. and bringing what is ordinarily a hybrid, where we have the parliamentary system of government with a bit of presidential, might be something that people of this country may have to look at because we need to have a functional position. The presidential system as is currently constituted has worked in such a way that the winner takes it all, the loser loses it all. So we do not have a functional position now. The constitution does not give the opposition the official facilities such that they'll continue to operate like they operated before. So my answer to you without taking a lot of time is we first dire peril as we stand because Honorable Raila and his NASA people have walked us into government. So who is opposition? Who is government? Right. And, and briefly, I'll just ask uh, our other two guests to chip into that, whether uh, you say that the Constitution doesn't really give the opposition the instruments that it would need to be uh, functional, and we'll get into that in a bit. And indeed, the handshakes was a common feature in Parliament today. And at one point, everyone in the plenary was shaking hands, and the highlight of it all was a handshake between the President and Embakasi East Member of Parliament, Babu Owino. Later, at the garden party, Babu Owino, who was a one-time a fierce critic of the president said that he was ready to work with him. When asked how he felt about the president's speech, Babu gave it a score of 10 out of 10. Let us shake hands and embrace our neighbors. Oh, very good. <laughs> And Steve, I want to get your sentiments on this. Dr. Alitalala says that the Constitution really does not empower uh, or really set the stage for a very powerful uh, opposition. Do you agree with this? And having also in mind that the president didn't really talk about a framework for what many would expect he would talk about following that golden handshake of how he and the opposition leader would then be working together going forward. I think, Sharon, it's a question of framing 
our own, because there's a disjunction between the philosophy of our politics, which is organized around politicians as opposed to institutions. And that may mean that uh, opposition may be lost because then opposition is not the institution of governance, but opposition is the key person. For instance, the person of Raila Odinga. So if he crosses over and starts cooperating with Jubilee, then opposition may be dead. But if you look at the ideology around the constitution, then from, from that viewpoint, I would, I would say that the opposition should remain uh, strong and, and, and vibrant as is anticipated in the constitution because the constitution is organized around the ideology of transparency, accountability, and inclusiveness. Transparency is what citizens have been demanding that we want to be governed not based on rumors and guesswork, but we want to be involved every step of the way in decision making. Accountability is what the judiciary has been trying to do, holding government institutions to account for their action to ensure that every institution and every public office holder is accountable for the responsibilities, actions, and decisions that they make. Inclusivity or inclusiveness is what has been elusive because inclusiveness is a function of political culture. Inclusiveness within the Constitution means that there is a level of cooperation, a shared approach to governance, which is what we are now seeing. And I'm hoping that Uhuru Kenyatta and Ray Lodinga have been co-opted into the philosophy that is already predicated upon within the Constitution, the philosophy ordained by the Constitution of cooperative governance, which means even if you are in the opposition, you have a role to check you know, and, and fault the government where the government has, has done wrong or, or, maybe, or maybe failed to perform its functions without necessarily losing the integrity of your voice. That is the kind of inclusiveness to governance that we look for. But if you look at the framing outside the Constitution, inclusiveness has been, has, has been framed to mean dishing out of positions, including people, political figures, into government. I think at this particular point in time, it's better that we Kenyans must debate and distinguish the two. There is the mismatch between our political culture, mm -hmm. which means that politics is organized around individuals as opposed to institutions, mm. and the intended approach which the Constitution has required, which means the ideology of inclusiveness means even if you are in the opposition, you still preserve the integrity of your voice and you can check the government without being considered to be disruptive of that government. Right. Yes. And Mr. Kirua, the president in his address spoke about the need to change how we approach uh, the politics of competition in the country and really saying that we need to put an end to unrestrained political competition. What do you think this really means in practical sense? Is this also alluding to that call to have uh, you know, the constitution amended, expand the executive? Well, I think the president was clear, and it is in line with the discussions they had with the Prime Minister Ayla, that we need to lay a broad framework for Kenyans to discuss. And the, something that has been worrying me is that many Kenyans are jumping into the details of the issue of the handshake, instead of looking at it as a framework uh, within which we can discuss some of the things that we need to look at, given the fact that the constitution that we have today even the setup of the opposition is neither the American system or the Westminster system. It is somewhere that in between. And we as Kenyans must ask ourselves, can we look for a system that gives us some organic uh, system acceptable to the Kenyans in terms of addressing their aspirations, their wishes, and the future as we make progress? Uh, number two, it is also important that when the Honorable Raila shook hands with the President, he never crossed over to Jubilee. It was two leaders who were competing last year and part of this year, saying that let us put the game that we had last year down, then we discuss the issues that afflict this nation. And those issues are many. Some of the issues they have mentioned, the issues of reforms, the issues of national reconciliation, national dialogue, but those are not the exclusive issues. There is also the issue of inclusivity, such that any time a Kenyan should not feel part outside the government, regardless of whether he voted for the government or not. Mm -hmm. Right, and of course, other than that um, call uh, to unity by the president in his address, he also really talked a lot about issues, uh, you know, 
within the Big Four agenda of the Jubilee. And we want to just discuss a little bit about that later on when we come back, because right now we want to take a short break here on the big story, but don't go too far. As you can see, I have a super panel with whom I'm unpacking this uh, all-important address by the president that took place this afternoon. So see you shortly. This is KTN News.